Hi there! In the last episode, I've covered deeply the reasons behind the existence of Dry Container Jam and shown how to implement the dependency injection in Ruby from scratch. This pattern, however powerful, can easily get annoying due to the lot of additional code one needs to write. And in most cases, it's repeatable code. Nothing challenging, so boring. This episode is a direct follow-up on that topic, and today I will focus exactly on problems related to more overhead and more code to be written, showcasing two great additions to Dry Container, which are Dry Auto Inject and the Dry System. By the end of this episode, you will be able to make use of all the power dependency injection offers to you without any excuses, as this dry combo just solves everything. Let me now go through those remaining issues that can stop you from leveraging DI in your Ruby applications. While dry container is awesome, there is still a lot of manual work to be done to actually register all dependencies for the first time. You still need to know exact way to register all components even if you need to do it only once. Then your initialize methods may become quite extensive, as I've shown in episode 7. Those methods have no logic at all, it's just defining some readers and assigning dependencies to them, so maybe we could automate this somehow. Good news, dry RB team already have you covered. There is a gem that allows exactly for that. It's Dry Auto Inject, one of the first dry libraries written by Peter Solnitsa. What it does is allowing you to automatically create apt readers in your classes and overwrite initialize methods, removing tons of code you would need to write without it. With this little gem, we can now simplify our registration file by automatically resolving all dependencies. First of all, in my container file, I just create the depths module, which will be the only thing I will use across my classes. And the cool thing that I cannot stop highlighting is that this gem does not work exclusively with dry libraries. Not only with the dry container, it works with any container as long as it responds to the RI method. It's just awesome. Now, in all our files, we can replace all initialized methods together with at reader definitions by including our depths module. This extremely simplifies the whole process of defining and injecting dependencies across the whole system. As I mentioned at the beginning of this short series, keep in mind that systems actually grow. I worked with projects where I had hundreds of files with five or seven dependencies each and in such scenarios, you can quickly appreciate this optimization. Please notice that the rest of the classes did not change at all, as Dry Auto Inject allows us to freely name any dependency we load from the container. So long names or paths are not issues, neither. The code using my classes also didn't change at all. You still can just access the container, but now all our dependencies are automatically resolved based on the container definition. However, can you spot further possible improvements on this? If not, if I have that covered, what's the point of dry system? In my article about the dry RP dependency graph, I've highlighted that based on the gem relationships, you can conclude which gems are supposed to be used directly and which are designed as low-level building blocks for other libraries. Dry system is a high-level gem designed specifically for direct use. While dry auto inject and dry container are extremely powerful, you will still have a lot of manual work required to register all components and across large systems, you probably would like to avoid that. So those are great to build other libraries on top of them. If I would have more than 50 files to be manually registered by the container in my project, I would think 10 times before I would actually do it. And more likely, I would end up with a conclusion that it's not worthy. Imagine a boot file manually registering hundreds of services and utility classes and you will quickly feel the pain. 
But then imagine if all those files in your projects would be registered and loaded automatically and all dependencies would be automatically resolved without you being stressed about a typo. Imagine whole trees of dependencies loaded by thread safe environment without a need to write a single initialization method. Dry system composes dry container and dry auto inject together, adding powerful auto loading capabilities and configuration options to your application. So let's look at the example. First, let me visit the container file. This little snippet uses dry container under the hood, but it also leverages the power of dry configurable to allow easy to use thread safe configuration for the gem. I've talked about dry configurable in episode 5, so feel free to check it out. So what's the point of it? Well, so far we needed to manually register all our files, didn't we? However, now if we will add a new directory to components file, we can now auto register all our dependencies. We completely don't need all the container registration code anymore as everything is just automatically resolved based on the file structure. This is a real game changer. With automating registration, loading and injection, we can now write our applications with zero overhead whatsoever. Nothing changes in our classes, nothing changes in the usage, but just every little piece of repeatable work is get off of our hands. As I myself am productivity madman, I just cannot appreciate this enough. Even though Drive Validation is the actual most popular gem from the Drive family, for me it's Drive System or rather Dependency Combo that is my favorite trio. It's worth to mention that Hanami 2 uses Dry System to manage all dependencies across the project. This is why it allows you to create truly majestic monoliths with reduced technical depths when your project succeeds. As Dry System is already configured and container is not used directly, as a developer I am only interacting with the depths module I had above. The rest is just a useful thing for me to understand, but it's completely irrelevant to start with Hanami. If I will create a file in the slice, it's automatically picked up by the Dre system, registered in the container and ready to be used. In Hanami, each slice has a dedicated container, which can be resolved independently. This allows to load a whole tree of dependencies for a single slice or set of slices in a single pod without loading anything from other parts of the system. The only two things you really need to care about in Hanami is that you can access the slice container, and this is an object using Dre container under, under the hood, which allows you to quickly browse and access registered dependencies. Then inside your objects, you will have depths module that you can use to streamline the process of composing objects together and allowing you to forget about implementing initialized methods over and over again. Everything else, is just tackled by Dre system and you can forget about it. Managing dependencies in the growing system is a complicated problem to tackle and Dre system with configuring three big features together solves all the possible issues one could have when start to work with dependency injection in Ruby. People can say that DI in Ruby is sometimes weird and I can agree with that. Dependency injection, like any pattern, solves some problems, but introduces different overhead. Dry system, however, is a tool suited specifically to address and solve those issues. As each of great gems from Dry family, Dry system does one thing and it does it great. So great that projects like Hanami can use it by default, integrate with Sitework or other great tools, and during developers will have a great time not only when they start the application, but specifically when the apps become majestic monoliths or multi-repo microservice-based projects. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you will find it useful. I use dependency injection in all my Ruby applications. 
previously Rails, now more Hanami, for years already. And I love it particularly because of existence of dry system. I encourage you to give it a try in your projects too. If you want to see more content in this fashion, subscribe to my YouTube channel, newsletter, and follow me on Twitter. I want to especially thank my recent sponsors, DNS Simple, which kindly joined to my Platinum sponsorship tier, allowing me to delegate a bit of work related to editing videos for my tutorials, Andrik Shivda and Sebastian Hribar for supporting this project. I really appreciate it. By helping me with a few dollars per month creating this content, you are helping the open source developers and maintainers to create amazing software for you. And remember, if you want to support my work even without money involved, the best you can do is to like, share and comment on my episodes and discussion threads. Help me add value to the open source community. If you know other great gems you wish me to talk about, leave a comment with this hashtag suggestion and I will gladly cover them in the future episodes. As usual, here you can find two of my previous videos. Thank you all for supporting my channel. You are awesome and have a nice rest of your day.